The Rail PSU, Rail Vikas Nigam, IPO open source subscription today and the company plans to raise 480 crores from this particular offer. Uh, our colleague Yash Jain caught up with Ashok Kumar Chaudhary, who's the Executive Director of Finance and CFO of the company, on what the outlook could be uh, as they move ahead and also how they plan to use the IPO funds. Listen in. This year we have only interim budget. Okay. As per rule, in interim budget there is no new work sanction. Only when regular budget comes in July, that new work can be sanctioned by Parliament. So presently, they have just given us the fund for ongoing work, which they have already sanctioned and we are already executing. So we have projected our demand at around 14,000 crore to the Ministry of Railway for uh, 1920s. The first half is a relatively lean period for me. My profitability against turnover as a percentage almost fixed, 4.5 to 5 percent. There is a target fixed by Ministry uh, Department of Public Enterprises. We are supposed to achieve that to get a good rating. That target has been projected as 9,500 crore. But every year we have been exceeding that target. Whatever target has been fixed by Department of Public Enterprises, agreed to by Ministry of Railway, we have been exceeding that. So, but, uh, Figure right now it's uh, difficult because we are at the end of close. We are getting different feedback from PIU. We have not yet compiled, but uh, we will cross that 9,500. That is what we expect. Initially, Kutch, when it was not reinvesting, it was showing higher prior pact, so it was consolidated, and we were getting in consolidated finances we were getting higher uh, profit margin as well as editor. But once they decided to go for reinvestment, the pack has gone, come down. So far, standalone is concerned, our data margin has been almost around 7.5 plus minus 0.3 types. It has been consistent. All right, uh, that's uh, the IPO on offer and uh, whether you should subscribe or not is the question that will be on investors' mind. We have some advice. Uh, Mrinalini Chetty, the research analyst at Centrum Broking joins us now. Mrinalini, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I think you have a note which says subscribe. Why? Uh, hi, good morning all. Uh, yes, we have a note which uh, states uh, subscribe from a long-term perspective on this issue. So if, uh, you know, versus the articles that have come into play, this company is a Ministry of Railway-backed agency. So basically it's an executing arm for the Ministry of Railways. So one point being this company has got good number of orders in hand currently. So as of December 18, the order book position stands at around uh, 77,000 crores. Uh, and of which around 40 or uh, thousand is, you know, a short gestation contracts, which would be completed, you know, in a period of say two to three years. The second point being, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the execution capability, you know, in terms of uh, revenue and packed cadre that this company has reported over FY15 to 18 is around 34% uh, and 19% respectively. In addition, uh, the company has an asset light model wherein, uh, you know, uh, the contractors have to take care of all the machinery, plants and stores. And the manpower uh, delegation is done by the Ministry of Railways. And uh, furthermore, you know, we've seen opportunities coming in from, uh, you know, the, the government focus on, you know, upping the railway infrastructure. So I think uh, all of these are some of the positives that could play out for this company and hence our uh, recommendation is uh, you know, subscribe for long term. Does it compare to any of the other listed players? I mean, uh, how, how do the valuations look if you stack it up, say, uh, against an IRCON? Uh, so, you know, in terms of uh, business model perspective, there is no direct comparable to uh, RBNL. So, you know, in terms of, you know, a like-to-like -like comparison, uh, IRCON International trades at a PE of 9.1 times on FY18 basis, whereas uh, RBNL trades at uh, 7 times on FY18 basis. So, you know, the valuation is reasonable. Okay. Any risk factors? Uh, so risk factors, according to us, would be you know any uh, delay in regulatory uh, approvals that would be coming through you know could impact the execution timeline. Uh, also, you know the uh, higher dependence on just one authority, that's the Ministry of Railways, and uh, you know also there is a realize any realization of contingent liabilities, which you know is currently standing at around uh, 3,700 crore as of uh, September 18. Okay, well, Mrinalini, uh, if you looked at the IRCON performance, it's not really rewarded investors. 
uh, you know, it, I'm not saying it's exactly comparable. You yourself have in your notes said that it is only uh, uh, the only distantly available company for comparison. Will people make money on this? Uh, so I feel, uh, you know, there could be a decent, uh, you know, decent performance with this IPO because, you know, in terms of uh, the pricing that they have done, uh, you know, is something that the investors are kind of happy about. Uh, that's how the valuations are seeming a little reasonable. Okay, well, we leave it at that, Temranalini. Thanks so much for joining us. That's the word coming in from Centrum Brooking. They are recommending to subscribe to this IPO. They say valuations are looking good and order book is strong.